Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, fellow privateers. We hope everyone had a nice weekend. Welcome to the weekly review and week ahead preview from your friends at Privateer FX. Started the video and I had some technical difficulties, so I am going for round two is a bit annoying but it's fine this is a good time this time this time of the week for me in the Sundays in the US before the markets really officially opened is you know, the best time to do our analysis it gives us time to look at charts when things aren't really moving around read all the weekend news anything that's uh, anything that you know pops up news headlines that popped up um, I'm going to show you, we're going to go to the news headlines, hold on, find it, oh, not that one, there we go, most read stories on Bloomy, put it right here, Bill Gross's bond fund assets decline below 1 billion, so this guy has suffered that's $60 million of redemptions in December. Um, he's at $950 million. So they've been pulling money for 10 consecutive months, it looks like. So he's now managing less money than he's worth. It's an embarrassment, but it's part of the industry. I think you could probably name uh, a lot of hedge fund and fund managers in that same boat. Uh Gunlock warns the U.S. economy is floating on an ocean of debt. That was out of his webinar in, uh, last week that was highly followed, always is. Um, oh, we got the market opening just now, 5 p.m. in Chicago. So we're going to be getting a lot of alerts. Let me see if I can minimize those so I don't see them popping up every five seconds. God. Um, we're going to be getting a lot of alerts, and I apologize for that. But there's not much I can do unless I log out of Bloomberg. PG&E, the wildfires in California have are sending that company into bankruptcy. No surprise there. Greece is Cyprus on the brink as confidence vote looms this week. Interesting. Greece has not really been on our radar, but could put some pressure on the euro. We'll get to the charts in a minute. And uh, we'll talk about Brexit, which really am tired of but it's you know making headlines once again dollar index weekly chart um, start with that uh, that a weekly there we are finished mid-range uh, we did get down to 95 cents we got a moving average the uh, the hundred week moving average is down here at 94.76, so just just kind of held in there, and then had a you know had a uh, dollar index had a decent rally late in the week, uh, most of which was from the euro. There's the euro close mid range, false breakout. You remember we were quite bullish euro on a break at 115 because it had been spent so much time in the 113 115 range, and um, it was it looks to me that it's a false break. Maybe it's a buy on dips. Um, I could see this getting back down to 114.10 area. I'd like to take a stab at the long side there. Um, <clears throat> that's a two-thirds fib. Um, so, you know, the euro still closed up in the week, but but well off its highs of 115.67. We thought one, we thought we were going to get some fall through into Friday and everything reversed um, Thursday, Friday. So some of the top side, you know, we were able to hedge a little bit up around in around 115.50 and but uh, did not go according to plan I suspect that a lot of investors um, that was a uh, their kind of favorite you know the the favorite trade of the year it seems to be bearish dollars so when you get a break the first full trading week of 2019 um, downside break in the dollar upside break in the euro um, you know people were getting pretty excited about it and now I would imagine have started stopping out of some of the week longs that they put on about on the 115 break dollar Swiss you remember um, I don't know if I 
sent anything out. I think I tweeted it, but massive outside reversal higher day. That was the tell that the euro was probably topping out. Um, again, this looks to be like an SNB type intervention of buying a dip in Euro Swiss. S then getting on top in Euro, selling the Euros out, legging into a um, long dollar Swiss position, which seems to be working just fine. Um, let's go to the Australian dollar. Uh, had a good week, plus 1.4%. Percent. Uh, we are closing back above the 200-day moving average, which we closed under back in December. Um, I do have a FIBO coming in here at 72.40 72 area, which I think we might get in Asia here. Um, I'm going to look to fade a little bit up here. It's had a big run-up after the flash crash and again we get a little lucky on that that night um, Kiwi dollar same deal on the week 1.5 percent higher I do have uh, some resistance here it's closed just above the two-thirds Feb and I've got resistance up here at 68.83 is the uh, three-quarter FIBO so again I'll look to fade that and the, this is kind of goes it, it, is in line with some of our equity uh, our equity views, and we'll take a look at the S&Ps in a little bit. Um, cable, I'm going to read to you something from, here's a cable daily. Uh, you can see, look at, take a look at the weekly. We had that big reversal higher week, and then this past week we closed near the highs on some renewed optimism, Brexit optimism. Um, it looks like the I'm reading some research from one of our anal analysts, and it looks like the betting markets are predicting a 20% chance of the UK leaving the EU, EU on March 29th. And that Tuesday's big vote that we've been waiting for, um, the PM could lose by a margin of around 200 votes, which would be the biggest House of Commons defeat ever. So there are all sorts of articles out in the uh, Sunday papers and you know about the politics and speculation of the course of events going in if if indeed the government loses the meaningful vote. Jerry Corbyn of the uh, obviously will be looking to call a no confidence vote within a few days, although he didn't really talk about the timing, um, but that's expected. John Major was in the Sunday Times saying it's time to take out and revoke Article 50. Um, Theresa May spoke, failure to back this deal would threaten the democratic process in the UK. Anyhow, so there was a bid tone Friday, as you can see from that daily bar closing near the highs. We do have some resistance in cable that comes in around 128.92, top of a channel, and... Um, Friday's uh, new high at 128.66 was, an, was uh, a new um, it's a new 20-day high actually. So for some of those trend followers, that if they were short, they were probably cutting out of some shorts or longs or adding to longs. Just seeing, you can see here from the daily chart that we made new 20-day highs. I like selling it up here around 129. So again, it's just another currency that has had a nice move up and that we're looking to fade um, just a tad higher from here. One thing that was interesting from um, this research I was reading is that the um, options pricing, the risk reversals we're calling for, they're actually um, going into this vote. This was as of Friday. Um, they, the riskies were marked at plus 0.5 for sterling calls, so that the market's pricing in a higher probability of a volatile move to the top side, which we haven't seen in a long time. We think this is completely wrong. I agree with this anal analysis that, that I read, where if anything, um, the market should be pricing in um, uh, pricing in sterling downside. And I'm surprised that it's actually the calls are uh, higher than puts for this. Um, you know, the tail risk here is a material, material, materially, apparently say that, lower sterling if this week turns out as poorly as we're thinking. And it should be, uh, market should be bid for puts. The straddle for the week, um, 
that would cover this is as of Friday that would cover this coming Friday is 1.53 percent that to me seems a little cheap as well I think we're gonna have more than you know one and a half percent type moves just with all the event risk so enough about sterling in the UK the currency is almost untradeable in the spot market um, but if you can be long some options I think there's a few opportunities uh, we talked about Aussie we talked about Kiwi um, we let's take a look at dollar cad dollar cad of a week um, had a uh, bullish engulfing day on Friday and it's probably because oil weakened a bit um, and on the week it had you know it had the big down week start the year and then last week we closed kind of mid-range uh, we're looking to resell these old highs here are like what is that 133.80 133.80 to 134 the figure somewhere around there uh, we'd be looking to resell that um, take a look at euro yen because that's been kind of interesting there's been a huge battle in euro yen up at um, this 125 the figure look at it look at this so we had a high at a 10 we had an I don't 08 or 05 something like that 125 the figure um, you know we've had it's been a big battle and it almost feels like someone's on top there um, move all drawing tools there we go <coughs> excuse me pardon me no, no, I got some family members coming into the house I'm hoping they will not disrupt my work here um, Here's an article from uh, Forex Live. I'm sure all of you follow. UK press reports the EU is preparing to delay Brexit until at least July. Um, sorry, I had to mute and tell my daughter to keep it down. Um, the report says the European Union sees a March 29th date is very unlikely, expected to be pushed back to July at the earliest. I mean, this thing is just going to keep dragging on. It's unbelievable. Um, anyhow, enough of that. So you're again, 125 the figure, key, right? It's 124.90, that old low. It's a low here, 124.60. So there's definitely some good overhead resistance here. There's some FIB matches. Um, you know, the end cross is to me, you know, are just following risk. So we'll, we'll get to the S&Ps here in a second. Dollar yen is just a mess. I have no clue what to do. We're not really even trading it. Um, let's go over to some of the macro markets. Uh, oil um, had that huge run up 25% from uh, uh, these lows. And we got spooked out of our longs on Friday. Um, I didn't like this reversal. We thought we were going to get the outside day. We didn't quite get it, but either way, it's had a big run up. We had targets up here around 55. We didn't quite get there, so we uh, we took profit on our longs. It was a nice little run up uh, to start the year. And um, what else did I write here? We we do like buying dips. I, I still think we can get up to the 55 dollars. So we're going to be, look to buy it back around 50. I think it rallied about 7 percent last week alone did make a new 20-day high at this uh, up here so um, but it's it's gone it's probably come too far too fast 10-year yields back down to 270 it got up to resistance that we liked we also had this position on we took some profit on Friday um, with some early uh, bonds were bidish and we took profit here around 271 um, the S&P 500, uh, this 2600 area is seems extremely important. Probably going to be long above, short below. Um, and then we like 2630 was kind of my target where I, I wanted to start getting short this market, looking for about a you know, pullback down to maybe 2500. Um, so we'll, we'll still be selling this rally up to 2630, but you know, the market put in. You know, three daily highs all around this 20, just 
just under 2600 so someone is clearly playing this old spike low that we had back in uh, that was that October low so I think that's a key level um, right around it was up two and a half percent last week um, yeah anywhere kind of 2625 to 2640 we'd be looking to looking to sell it um, here, I'll take a look at this chart. I was reading something about high yield. Here's a high yield ETF. Talk about a parabolic chart. Definitely got to get, um, let's take a look at the, go back to the September highs before, let's go here. What's this? Late September. Collapse in December. And look at this parabolic rise. Closed above the two-thirds. We're now approaching the 100 day and the 200 day which you know are about a dollar and a half uh, 60 cents apart and we got a fib up here this whole zone here between the 100 day 200 day and the, and the three quarter fib out this is a must sell area um, I think the market was you know the market was really short this and the way that this ETF works um, I think they got they got hurt pretty badly the VIX closed back under 20 see it's just all been red since you know the after that big christmas eve melt up in, in the vault in vix we've just been down every day since so that's you know 27th 26th 27th 28th right into january back below the uh, 100 day moving average 1866 and then um 1670 is the 1670 is the 200 day moving average. Um, what do we got ahead for the week? Uh, ECB's Draghi and the Bank of Japan's Kuroda speaks. We have six Fed speakers. Last week we had 10 Fed speakers in a span of two days. And um, policymakers have hit the, uh, clearly have hit the we got your back switch um, and really helped stabilize risk last, last week. We think it's fleeting. Um, we have a lot of earnings coming out. A bunch of banks start, I believe, start hitting the wires on Tuesday. So a, a fair amount of earnings starting next week, which I think will be uh, directionally tradable. Uh, we have buybacks starting late January. I suspect they'll have some lower levels to buy buy some more stock back. Uh, JP Morgan came out saying that we don't have a Fed put. Everyone's calling it the, the Powell put, but... It's not really a Fed put, but it's a it's a Fed covered call, which is an interesting way to look at it. Um, basically, if risk rallies and i.e. the stocks are rallying, they can hike rates, and if they're under pressure and risk is under pressure, we'll just hold. So, I like that uh, perspective, kind of the way that they're looking at things. Um, that should do it for me. Sorry about some of the background noise. Um, You'll be hearing from us on the European Open. And uh, keep an eye out. It seems like May is still speaking, so just watch out for any, any uh, here we are, here's Cable. Let's take a one more last look at Cable. You know, sitting here right near the highs of last week. So get your offers in. I think you can sell us 128.90, 129.20 area. Uh, but, you know, keep your, keep your stops close and... Uh, Make sure you have your stops in because that's one headline away from blowing up, you know, in either direction. Anyhow, anyhow you'll hear from us on the European Open, and I will, um, you know, be tweeting out anything of interest. And if there's any big moves or interesting developments or any more flash crashes, you'll hear from me um, throughout the week. All right, good luck trading. Have a great week ahead, and we will speak to you next week. Cheers.